Vanderhoof is near the geographical center of British Columbia. Vanderhoof is a district municipality on the Yellowhead Highway number 16. Covering almost three square kilometers, it has a population of about 4,500 within its limits and offers services to nearly 10,000 people in nearby rural communities. The municipality is named for Herbert Vanderhoof of Chicago, one of its founders. He was an employee of the Grand Trunk Pacific Development Company, a subsidiary of the Grand Trunk Pacific Railway. Vanderhoof is known for its bird sanctuary along the Nechaco River. Canada geese, swans, and other migratory birds pass through Vanderhoof. The Nechaco is home to a number of fish species, including salmon and the endangered Nechaco white sturgeon. On November 1st, 1928, an aircraft landed in Mr. Snell's sheep pasture. The new Alexander Eagle Rock A2 was on a delivery flight to Whitehorse for the Yukon Airways and Exploration Company. It had left Colorado Springs on September 7th, stopping at every town along the way, including Williams Lake and Quinnell, giving exhibitions and rides to cover expenses. Although Vanderhoof had seen aircraft overhead for several years, a couple of significant sightings were in 1920 and 21. The 1920 Alaska Flying Expedition, four American Army de Havilland DH-4Bs flew overhead the morning of August 13th. They had left Prince George heading to Hazleton. The flight had originated in New York and was en route to Nome, Alaska. It reached Nome on October 4th. The following year, 1921, on August 26th, another American pilot flew overhead in his Curtis JN-4 Jenny. On September 22, 1928, the Nechaco Chronicle reported that aerial maps of the area were being made. The RCAF was producing a photographic mosaic of the area for use by map makers. The following year, 1929, the RCAF was back on June 9th in a Fairchild 71 seaplane. This was based at Summit Lake, north of Prince George. The seaplane likely landed on the Nechaco while on its photo flights. It had landed at many other communities while photographing them. Around noon on July 19, 1929, an American military aircraft on a long distance flight from New York to Nome passed overhead on its way to Whitehorse. U.S. Army Corps Captain Russ G. Hoyt had left Edmonton and his Curtis Hawk XP-6B pursuit ship at 5.30 a.m. on a 1,090-mile leg to Whitehorse. Above Hazleton, about 10.30, he was bucking strong winds and would need more fuel to reach Whitehorse. Reversing his course, he landed at Vanderhoof at 2 p.m. He refueled and waited overnight for better weather, departing the next morning at 4. Hoyt arrived in Whitehorse after a five and a half hour flight. The Cocker and Emsley Farm, formerly the Boerhaven Farm, was the site of construction of the first airfield in October 1937. Intended as an emergency field, it officially opened in March 38. It saw little use. However, in November 1941, a Pan American Airways Lockheed, en route from Seattle to Alaska, landed for an unknown reason. Pearl Harbor, in December 1941, brought a flurry of military activity to Canada's west coast. 
Vanderhoof was chosen as the site of an intermediate airfield on the route between Prince George and Smithers. This route was later known as the Inland Staging Route. Early in 1942, a half section of land, including the Cocker and Emsley Farm, was expropriated. The Department of National Defense carried out an airport survey and let a contract to the Bennett and White Construction Company. The contract was for clearing and preparation of three gravel runways. Vanderhoof was one of a series of airfields constructed or upgraded to handle military aircraft. Others were at Woodcock, Smithers, Prince George, Quinnell, Williams Lake, and Dog Creek. They constituted a second line of defense to be used in an extreme emergency should an enemy gain a foothold on the BC coast. On short notice, fighter aircraft could be operated defensively from these stations. Each station was manned and equipped to provide services to military and airline traffic. Between October 1st and 6th, 1942, an RCAF Norseman on floats operating from the Fraser River at Fort George flew daily photographic surveys of Vanderhoof and Prince George. The RCAF's Western Air Command ordered construction of RCAF Vanderhoof barracks, mess hall, and other buildings. They were built to house a radio range station to allow aircraft to carry out instrument approaches. On May 20, 1943, Western Air Command issued Secret Organization Order No. 126. Henceforth, RCAF Vanderhoof would become part of the interior staging route as No. 14 Staging Unit. Late in August 1943, an RCAF Bolingbrook arrived on a photographic mission. After Japan capitulated, the Department of National Defense turned over the Vanderhoof Airfield to the Department of Transport. In 1946, RCAF Airfield custodian Scotty Almond turned over operations to the Department of Transport which maintained the field until April 1959. At that time, control was passed to the village. The village of Vanderhoof established a public wharf and dock on the Nechaco River for use by local and transient float planes. The water aerodrome is located at the end of Recreation Avenue. In September 1964, the Vanderhoof Flying Club was organized. The club started a series of successful air shows. This tradition was further enhanced by another club, the Blue Mountain Flyers. In November 1972, Jerry Haldeman's Harrison Airways of Vancouver began tri-weekly scheduled service to Vanderhoof and Burns Lake using DC-3s. That service lasted fewer than three years. Vanderhoof Airport is known as CAU-4. It is located 1.3 nautical miles or 6.5 kilometers north of Vanderhoof. The airport serves the community's aviation needs including charter flights, corporate flights, medevacs and recreational flying. The airport is equipped with an automatic weather observing system and fuel is available at a facility run by the Vanderhoof Flying Club.